on the news, many fear dead as building collapses in the Koyi area of Lagos State. DHQ proposes measure of Army, Air Force and Naval War Colleges for operational efficiency. And Anabra Guba candid candidate Ozigbo joins call for unbanning of IPOB. Glad to have you joining us on News Now. I am Fola Shade, or Green Day. We begin tonight with the sad news that a 21-story building under construction in Gerald Road, Ikoyi, Lagos State, has collapsed. The number of persons trapped is yet unconfirmed, but workers and neighbors scrambled to dig people out of the rubble of the collapsed building. Officials of the National Emergency Management Agency say they are trying to deploy the military for crowd control as apprehensive sympathizers insist there are many people trapped inside the building. According to eyewitnesses, over 50 persons are believed to be trapped inside the building. Meanwhile, well, Lagos State Commissioner of Police Akim Odumosu says three corpses have been recovered while efforts are underway to recover others. But the fact is that uh, we got the information that the building collapsed about a few hours ago and we deployed all the rescue operators of Lagos State Government. So we landed at just 21 year, 21 story building and so far, so far, three have been rescued their life and three have lost their life <clears throat> so far. And until the, field, the operation ends, you can know the actual figure. But it should be rest assured that whoever that is trapped here, we are going to make sure that we rescue everybody trapped here. That's why the government has asked for more, you know, has asked for more apparatus from other agencies so to come in now to assist. So to those who have lost, you cannot ascertain either Mr. A or Mr. B or Mr. C. So we should not give opportunity now to locate the family. At the end of the day, the deputy governor is here fiscally on the ground. You see him now. The commissioner for fiscal planning is here. So all the rescue agencies are here from the federal, so from the states, and other agencies are assisting. So just to be patient. All what you know is that we don't want more casualty. That's why we are controlling the crowd. Because the building there is going down, and everybody around there is can affect anybody. That's why we are just pushing crowd out. So they can give opportunity for the professionals to do their job faster. So that whoever that is trapped and still alive will rescue. You'll see the medical personnel, everybody's on the ground. So just be patient with us. At the end of the day, the next two hours now, I will rebuke the press to let them know, to update. But for now, the rescue mission is on. And all us are on deck. And we are not leaving until you get to ground zero. We know that no human being is there again. How many people were inside, sir? Well, we don't know. We don't know. So the person, so we don't know. So those to give us that figure are the site managers. When we get the site managers now, will tell us. We learned that some people just came in, artisans came in to do different types of job. So we don't know which particular one. And we don't even know which floor are they, they are working. But you said at least three have been rescued? Yes, and three corpses too have been recovered. So the operation still goes on. At the end of the day, we get the people in charge. So we get the site manager, we get the site engineer, so all those that are supervising, through them now we have the figure of those who are on the site. Any, any indication about the cause, the cause of the collapse? The cause, not yet, not yet. What we have after now is rescue mission. After the rescue mission now, then the technical officer will now go into it. Maybe they need to take some samples to lab to know what happens. So maybe there's going to be, maybe there's standard or not, it's not for me. But the technical officers now, the site engineers now, the government engineers, they will now meet and find out what is the cause. But for now, what you have to have is to rescue lives that are there. That's what you have to have right now. How do you explain that the rescue is so many long to arrive on the site? Well, joining us now to discuss this further is our correspondent, Mary Kano, who is at the site of the incident to bring us more details. Uh, thank you so much, Mary, for joining us on News Now. Now, could you tell us more? What exactly is going on at the site of the, of the incident? Um, are there recovered more bodies? 
Uh, well, uh, Fala Shade, thank you for uh, having me on the news. Well, it is a precarious situation right here in Gerald Road, Ikoi, Lagos State, where uh, a 21 story building actually collapsed, and uh, the number of people who are currently buried under the rubble is yet to be ascertained. We had the Commissioner of Police, Hakim Odumos, to speak on the situation, and he also said he was unable to ascertain the number of people who are currently buried under the rubble. Well, uh, not much can be said about the situation. About six people, three people have been, and three bodies rather, have been recovered from the site, and three also were recovered, buried, I'm sorry, uh, uh, rescued, rescued alive. Three people were rescued alive, and three bodies were recovered from under the rubble. We are still waiting uh, uh, to get a, a proper uh, 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 definition of uh, what the situation is currently like. Mary, um, we learned that um, this is a building currently on the construction. Um, have you been able to learn any new thing, perhaps what caused the collapse in the first place? Uh, I'm afraid, Fala Shade, can you please request your question? I, I was unable to... Now, Mary, if you heard me, I asked, um, have you been able to determine what exactly caused the building to collapse in the first place? Because um, from reports, we learned that um, the building is currently under construction. Uh, according to the uh, Commissioner of Police, Hakim Bodrimosu, he also could not tell what caused uh, uh, the building collapse. What we know is it was under, still under construction. So one would only wonder why a building that was still under construction was leased out, you know, for people to leave in. Um, so far, I was able to witness uh, a body carried out from underneath the rubble, but uh, we don't know exactly what caused the collapse, and we are also not aware of how many people are currently buried under, but all we know is that about six people, three people have been recovered, while uh, three bodies were also recovered three people were rescued three bodies recovered that's all we know for now but right here we have um, some rescue um, agencies we have NEMA over here we have the fire service department we have a police uh, we have some um, soldiers the army officials here and that is all that we know for now uh, maybe in some minutes we'll be able to uh, to know exactly what the situation is now we can see some buildings around you are they in good shape and um have you been able to see some um, operatives from the emergency um, agencies trying to um, take away this rubble to to rescue the victims from now uh, the rescue agencies are, are around like i said we have the police we have the NEMA around right now we have um, the soldiers around uh, and they are also helping to to pick up the bodies to get the bodies uh, right here behind me you have the deputy governor of uh, lagos state who is also present at the scene of the collapse he has also gone around to see the situation what the situation is like but he's not willing to grant an interview and that's all we know for now all right, thank you so much, uh, Mary. We'll definitely join you later in the news bulletin for more updates on that. But please stay safe in the meantime. Well, moving on, the Nigerian military is considering the fusion of the Army, Air Force and Naval War Colleges in the country to enhance operational efficiency. Uh, this is according to the Chief of Defence Staff, General Loki Irabo, at the Defence Headquarters Made in Joint Operations Planning Exercise for Army, Naval and Air Force War Colleges Nigeria. Also speaking, the Commandant, Army War College Nigeria, Major General Solomon Udunwa, expressed, uh, expressed optimism that the participants of the exercise, codenamed Exercise Kai, would become better equipped in response to contemporary security challenges with Evelyn, Nigeria. The whole essence is for us to understand that joint planning is essential. It's when you be able to know yourself during the time of training that, of course, you'll be able to know the strengths and, of course, um, the, uh, if I may use the expression, the weaknesses of, uh, of your colleagues. Thereafter, uh, how one need to, you know, um, leverage the strengths of each other as well as how you can cover up whatever gaps exist um, at, at this level. So this is precisely what we intend to achieve and we're already on the right course and I believe that um, as the leadership of the armed forces evolves um, there will be of course a change and continuity with this idea. I'm confident that the benefits of this exercise will strengthen our resolve to make it more sustainable in the coming years. To the participants, I enjoin you to devote yourselves to the exercise as you stand to benefit from your interactions with one another while seeking viable options for the employment of land, maritime and air power in a joint environment to solve problems brought out during the exercise. 
Still on security, the Nigerian army says over 30 terrorists have been killed following the raid by joint troops of Operation Hadinkai, carrying out operations on terrorist enclaves in the northeast. The spokesman for the Nigerian army, Brigadier General Oyema Nwachiku, in a statement on Sunday, said the raid was part of intensified operations by the military in the region. It maintained that the successful joint operations conducted by both the air and land components of the army underscore the importance of synergy and cooperation in the fight against terrorism and insurgency in the country. It thereafter asserted that troops of Operation Hadinkai remained resolute and unshaken in their effort to bring the insurgents to their knees. Away from security now to politics, candidates of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, in the Anambra governorship election, Valentine Ozigbo, says leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, in Nandekanu, is filling the vacuum of leadership failure in the southeast. Ozigbo made the assertion during a debate held for the governorship election candidates in Oka, the state capital, on Monday. The PDP candidate explained that IPOB's agitations are genuine in most cases because marginalization is a situation happening in Nigeria. Ozigbo called for the release of Kanu and the proscription of IPOB as a terrorist group. He also called for dialogue from all concerned parties for peace to reign in the southeastern state. The People's Democratic Party has elected new members into its National Working Committee to lead the party ahead of the 2023 general elections. The new leaders are elected at the party's just concluded national convention, which was held in Abuja, the nation's capital. Our correspondent, Abisola Dibayo, has the details in this, in this story. After a failed attempt by the suspended national chairman of the People's Democratic Party, Uche Secundus, seeking to stop the party's national convention, 3,600 delegates from the 36th state of the federation have gathered at the Eagle Square in Abuja to elect new leaders for the country's leading opposition. Prominent members of the party praised the organizing committee for putting together an organized convention. They maintained that the results of the convention will help proposition the party. For a party that has been in opposition for upwards of six years, you can see the energy in the air, the determination. I'm very, very impressed with the resilience of PDP as a party. The whole place is agog and uh, you can almost touch the optimism in the air. Nigerians will hear more from the PDP and they will be happy that the party will come back together organize themselves, win power, and reconstruct Nigeria. You can see PDP is an organized party. Definitely we are going to revive the party and put the party in a, in a very strong city. The delegates who explained that the country has been in a bad situation since the emergence of the current APC administration stressed the need for the convention, which will aid the PDP's return to power come 2023. Now that you have tested another party, you know which party to vote. You are now well experienced to know what is right, especially with the leadership of my brother, uh, Professor Ayu. I have no doubt that we are going to lead to success. PDP is ready to play its role and to rescue the nation from its current problems. I think they do not have the necessary recipe and know how to take Nigeria forward. The next big thing for the PDP uh, is to nominate a candidate uh, for the party uh, who can tackle the challenges now facing the, part, the country at uh, large, particularly the unity of the country, the economic reform of the country, the security challenges of the country, and uh, the restructuring of the country. At the end of the event, former Senator Iyochia Ayu, who is a consensus candidate for the position, took over the leadership of the main opposition party alongside 20 others elected into various positions within the PDP National Working Committee. Abisola Adebayo, TV360 News. To create awareness on the dangers of illegal migration, the International Organization for Migration, IOM, has organized a five-day event to contribute in the fight against human trafficking. Through the Migrants as Messengers Creative Week, volunteers are trained and given the platform to tell their migration stories through art. Our correspondent, Mojisula Matomi, tells us more. The artworks displayed here are a sad reflection of what life was like for these former victims of human trafficking and irregular migration. 
using paintings and spoken word, these migrants as messengers tell their story of pain, hardship, and triumph. Adelu Jeremiah, who survived the ills of irregular migration, illustrates his experiences as a victim of human trafficking. Jeremiah's painting depicts a man who, despite the painful pangs of hunger, seeks freedom rather than the temporary pleasure of food. This picture is actually showing those persons who are stranded in Libya, who are held captive. There was no food, there was no water. Even when they saw food, even when they saw water, they were unable to eat because the pain and the torture was too much. So if you take a close look at these pigs, you see that this man is in the prison. There was nobody he can run to. There's nobody he wants to call. Even at that stage, they gave him water. They gave him food. He could not eat because of the dangers he was facing over there. Oluwatobi Ayediron, who is also a victim of human trafficking, shares his near-death experiences and his journey to freedom. The uh, freedom uh, represents um, when uh, a migrant returns back to the country, maybe uh, by uh, through the federal government or through IOM, and he came to the country. So, in that um, uh, scenario, he's been free. So that is, you can see, have uh, uh, chain hands being loose. So that simply means he has gotten or she has gotten freedom. The organizers say for some, the journey through complete rehabilitation and healing came through expressions in hearts, poetry and spoken word, adding that platforms such as this will serve as a catalyst to help eradicate irregular migration. The event is to give an avenue to volunteers who are returned migrants who cannot freely express themselves, but they can only do it based through uh, art. And the main objective of the project is to empower returned migrants, whom we call volunteer messengers, messengers with a different skill set, so that they can be able to sensitize their peers. It's been an amazing experience getting to teach um, the returning migrants who had no experience in the arts at all. We had two days with them and they were able to whip up really amazing artworks. In 2021 alone, the federal government identified not less than 499 victims and 812 potential victims of human trafficking, placing more urgency on continued collaboration with stakeholders to eradicate the menace of human trafficking and irregular migration in the country. Mojisala Matomi, TV360, Lagos. We'll take a break here and return with more stories. Just stay with us. Welcome back. Now we are connecting back to Americano, our correspondent, who is at the site of the 21-story building which crashed um, earlier this afternoon at um, Gerard Road, Ikoyi, Lagos State. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mary, for rejoining us. Now, could you tell us, um, are there plans to take down um, other affected buildings? Because we can see some other buildings um, under construction around the site. Um, have you heard anything from authorities uh, to take down that building because of uh, the danger it poses to people around there? Uh, all right, Fela Shade. Well, the situation is uh, still the same. The authorities are uh, refusing to grant any interview. Earlier on, we had them, Hakim Ojumo, so the Commissioner of Police, speak to us about um, the situation. And according to him, the number of lives were the only things he told us, the number of lives lost and those who were rescued. Uh, but uh, regarding the high-rise buildings um, located around um, the building that collapsed, nobody is saying anything you know, about it. No one is telling us if um, there are plans to take the buildings down to avoid another situation like this. Nobody is saying anything. But the only uh, uh, difference now from when you called me earlier is that um, about four bodies have been um, recovered and three people rescued. So that is the only development, the recent development. Um, uh, the, the number has increased to seven, four bodies recovered and the three people rescued. Regarding the building, no one is saying anything. The Deputy Governor of Lagos State, um, Abafemi Hamzat, who is also here, he's only going around and uh, checking to see how we can make the situation better. He has, he has refused to grant any interview. An update. Um, before I let you go, Mary, has there been an update with regards to the number of casualties so far? And um, have authorities been able to rescue anyone alive? 
Uh, like I said, uh, uh, only the number has increased. Earlier when you called it was six, but now it is seven. Four bodies recovered and the three people rescued. That is the only change, the only development that we have witnessed so far. Although uh, the construction company, according to people who were around witnesses, uh, those who were part of the construction company were also buried right under the rubble. They were right there when the building collapsed. Uh, that, that is the only situation. Right now I'm moving because we have a fire truck leaving the place and we've been told to move. That is the current situation that uh, we are facing right now at uh, uh, Gerald Road in Ikoi, Lagos State. Been able to get uh, the updates um, with regards to uh, the type of building that collapsed. Um, is it a residential building or is it for commercial purposes? Could you tell us anything you know about that right now? Uh, I'm afraid, Shadi, can you follow Shadi? Can you please repeat the question? Asked, um, have you been able to get any updates with regards to the type of building that collapsed? Uh, is it for residential purposes or for commercial? Well, the, according to what we know, it's a 21-story building and it's for residential purposes. It is an uncompleted building that was leased out for people to rent. So that is all we know right now about the, the building and the situation. We are waiting for the authorities to grant a proper interview uh, so we do not speculate and um, you know, dish out false, uh, false reports. That's, that's the current situation, Shadi. Just one last question. Have you been able to see um, any equipment in any form um, trying to dig out uh, people from the rubble? Uh, I'm sorry, can you please repeat the question? You heard me. I asked, um, have you been able to see any um, equipment uh, or basically um, authorities um, taking up um, rescuing missions, taking out the rubbles to, to, to free up um, some people who perhaps um, survived the crash? Uh, I'm afraid for that, Shadi. I really did not hear your question. This one that has light. All right, Mary, um, thank you so much for those updates you gave. Um, thank you so much on news now. Uh, moving on, we'll take a short break and return with more stories. Just stay with us. to me regarding the company salary yes uh, the figures don't seem to add up i suspect there's some form of a discrepancy precisely sir keep the figure that way so that's for the winter. that's my money i'm sorry sir i can't i can't do that sir. see how padded your feet are are you telling me you cannot pad up figures sir padding is against best auditing practices and it's a form of corruption it's true. <laughs> I can't ask. Ah, right, you were just attacking me. That's it. Bagole. Yes, sir. You are fired. Fine. Yeah. Fine, sir. Rather than watch corruption go under my watch. Padding is a form of corruption and not in my country, sir. Corruption not in my country. Stop corruption now. An anti-COVID-19, Egypt has disclosed that the total number of COVID-19 vaccines doses supplied to North Africa has reached 72 million. According to the acting Minister of Health, Khalid Kafa, 38 doses have been administered so far, leaving about 34 million jabs available. Kafa added that during the coming period, Egypt expects around 26 million more doses, including Sinovac, Pfizer, AstraZeneca and Johnson & Johnson vaccines. He further noted that work is underway to expand Egypt's regional vaccination center capacity with 1,079 centers currently operational, including 180 travel centers. Well, we'll take another short break and return with more stories in business. Do stay with us.
Our business news is up next with Abisola Adebayo. Up, uh, over to you, Abisola. Thank you very much, Falashadi. Welcome to Business News. Leaders of the world's 20 major economies have approved a global minimum corporate tax rate of at least 15%, which will come into force in 2023. In a statement by the U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, leaders of the countries representing 80% of the world economy endorsed an historic agreement on new international tax rules, including a global minimum tax which, that will end the damaging race to the bottom on corporate taxation. The tax is, however, aimed at preventing preventing multinational companies from taking advantage of complacent tax regimes and not paying taxes where they operate. We take a pause here and return with a review of the stock market. The nation's boss market resumed the week on a bearish mood to halt the bullish sentiment of two consecutive trading sessions, with the market capitalization losing over 20 billion era. The downturn was buried by investor sell sentiment on the insurance and industrial goods sector. Specifically, the market capitalization said 27 billion era to close at 21.906 trillion era. The all share index dipped by 0.15%. The market's negative performance was driven by price depreciation in large and medium capitalized stock which was led by etana and updc on the gainers list fits in and guinness topped that chart today uh, moving on to market summary our market summary sees a total volume of 378 million units of shares valued at over 3 billion uh, exchanging and in 6384 deals moving on to the global market today it's all in the positive territory on the foreign scene london's fitzy marked its Ice closed in 20 months on Monday, aided by gains in most market in most bank stocks and a weaker pound, while shares of British bank Barclays slipped after its chief executive officer stepped down. The Dow Jones in the same vein rose slightly on the first trading day of November. After markets emerged from the historically tough seasonal period successfully, shares in Asia Pacific were mixed on Monday as investors reacted to economic data that showed a, a mixed picture of Chinese manufacturing activity in October. That's all on Stock Market Review. Over to Fola Shadi for the rest of the news. Well, thank you so much, Abisola, for that update. Now, on the foreign scene, Ethiopia's Prime Minister Abiy Hamad has appealed to citizens to take up arms to block advancing rebel fighters. The Prime Minister made the call after the rebels from the northern Tigray state reportedly seized control of more towns in neighboring Amara. The Tigray People's Liberation Front, however, says it aims to break a siege of the northern region. Meanwhile, the Ethiopian government said the rebels executed more than 100 youth residents in the Kombucha area. The TPLF has not commented and there has been no confirmation of the killings. Well, up next is Entertainment Reporter News Now. Nigerian disc jockey, copy, and musician Zlatan have settled their rift as they performed together in London. Copy shared a video on her social media page where she surprised the music star on stage. The two later performed their hit single, Gelato. Earlier in the year, Copy dropped the bombshell about a possible rift between herself and the music star. According to her, Zlatan had blocked her on Instagram, WhatsApp, and Twitter for over 10 months. <laughs> Grammy-winning Nigerian superstar Whiskey has revealed the title of his next album and its release date as his fourth studio album Made in Lagos clocks one year. Since the Made in Lagos album was released, it's produced many heights and was streamed over one billion times. It also produced Africa's first number one top ten hit on the Billboard Hot 100. His next album will be titled More Love, Less Ego and it will be released on the final days of his Made in Lagos tour which will end in Canada January 22, 2022. And that is all that we have for you in the entertainment segment of News Now.
away from entertainment now to sports niger's men team a has qualified for the semi-finals of the ongoing second edition of the international table tennis federation ittf as the game kicked off today at the molade okoya thomas hall of teslin balogun stadium suriliri lagos the door as is Sri Lanka and samuel boboye defeated the men's team from Kodovro and bennett to make nigeria the first nation to qualify for the semi-finals while speaking to journalists president of the nigeria table tennis federation isha kutikon said the competition will serve as an avenue to unite stakeholders at the region which will bring the best out of the players to bring the western region together to evaluate the status of players from the region uh, and as the leadership of the western region believe that together is our strength. We need to evaluate, evaluate them, and to, that is the only way we can now force ourselves to face the other challenges. So, we first and foremost is to contest. This is the first major event after the lockdown, and um, I want to tell you the firework is just about to start. We're building a new national team. Let's put it like that. Six junior team players representing the country. We have senior players at home who could play, but we made a conscious decision. The president, especially, and the vice president, who's the technical director, made a conscious decision to play only junior players for this tournament. And, you know, we're quietly confident they'll do us proud. This is not even, you know, we have Taiwo Mati now playing abroad. They're on the world tour now, doing very well. So. It just tells you the depth of Nigeria table tennis. It's, it's great for the future of Nigeria table tennis. We are trying to give them the platform to play more games. Um, as you know, uh, our our main one, two, three players are not here because of, um, of course, it's not like I'm trying to slight um, the whole event. But you know, we have the likes of Aruno, Jide, Bode, and the stuff. So. We see this as an opportunity for the Boboyes, the Aziz, to come and have playtime. Now we are reconnecting back to Mary Kano, our correspondent, who is currently at the site of the story building that uh, crashed at um, Gerard Road, Ikoi, uh, Lagos State. Um, Mary, thank you so much for standing by. Now, could you give us any new updates um, as regards um, the current situation at um, the, the, the crash? Uh, well, uh, for last day, the situation, I'm afraid, is still the same. Uh, it's still the same. We're still waiting on the Commissioner of Police uh, and then the Deputy Governor of Lagos State, who is currently, both of them are currently still here. Uh, they are still with um, uh, uh, eyewitnesses and those who are waiting uh, for them to give updates on the situation. But uh, I must bring it to, to our notice, or to your notice, that uh, it took forever for the response uh, units, agencies, to get here. Uh, it took about three hours before they were able to get here. Even when uh, uh, some of us got here, they were still not yet here so that is um, that is just the current uh, situation on ground nothing has changed the number of uh, people recovered uh, three rescued rather three what uh, four bodies recovered and that's that's just what the situation is for last day before I let you go oh, how would you describe um, the current feeling there um, are, are people frightening especially uh, when you consider all the buildings that um, could be also be in danger uh, and could collapse uh, any moments from now uh, uh, well uh, for that, can you please repeat the question now Mary if, if Falashade, can you please repeat? Yes, if you could hear me. I asked, um, could you tell us what the feeling is like, um, especially uh, for the sympathizers trying to, um, you know, commiserate and um, rescue or, or perhaps um, contribute as much as possible uh, to, to the uh, evacuation going on right there? Uh, well, uh, Falashade, I must say it is a very unfortunate situation right here. The parents and um, loved ones of those who are possibly buried under the rubble have not been allowed to go in. They are all waiting outside, hoping that um, authorities give them the go-ahead to go in and at least see what the situation is like. You know, give them a sense of, uh, 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 I don't know, uh, relief that, oh, if their loved ones are there or not, let them just wait, stand there and see, and see uh, uh, if they can maybe get the bodies of their loved ones and even those who are standing around are being uh, chased away by, by uh, security agencies so that's just what the situation is those standing around are being chased away loved ones uh, and uh, parents of those who are possibly buried under the rubble are not allowed to go in so that's just the situation 
thanks uh, Mary Kano for standing by and giving us this update. Thank you so much. And that was Mary Kano, our correspondent at the site of the, of the uh, collapse uh, building, the 21 story building that collapsed um, in General Road, Ikoyi, Lagos State. I need to wrap on our news bulletin. Many thanks for watching. I am Fola Shadi. Oh, Green Day. Bye for now.